Welcome back to the channel. First of all, let me start by saying thank you for all the positive comments and like on my previous video that you, you can see here. And uh, also thank you for all of you that subscribe to the channel, more than 450 since the last update. So once again, thank you very much. Um, now back to the video. Today I'll show you the new method I'm using to build my instrument panels. If you've seen my old video, there's been a few changes. This is probably my fourth or uh, fifth revision because I wanted to address too many issues that I had with my older panels. Number one, the text. Although the previous one was uh, quite good, it didn't have the resolution that I was uh, looking for and also it wasn't as white as uh, I would have liked it to be. Number two, the backlight. Once again, the uh, previous method works and uh, it was good, but I wasn't 100% happy about some of the hot spotting I was getting and also there was a little bit of light blade from underneath the light plate. And so here's the new version. As you can see, there's no light blade from under the plate and the text is illuminated nice and evenly and the resolution of the text is nice and sharp. And I've also changed the font compared to the one that I used before. So this is a more realistic compared to the, the real gen. So here's the new version. So here's the design that uh, I've done in CorelDRAW. The design is the same uh, multi-layer laser cut acrylic concept from the previous version, the back blade still made out of a two millimeter solid black acrylic. This is uh, what I use to mount all the electronics. The light plate has had a major redesign. These uh, two layers are now made out of a three millimeter transparent opaque acrylic. The bottom half holds a 2.7 millimeter wide LED strip for the backlight. It has a channel for the LED strip to run through and the larger holes for the switches mounting nuts. The top one has uh, just uh, smaller holes, so only the top of the switch can be seen, and this is where the text will be engraved. Now to avoid any light bleed from underneath, I've added a one millimeter black acrylic uh, layer at the bottom, which uh, has the same larger holes, plus a pass-through for the LED strip cables. All these layers are then uh, glued together the edges are sanded and then all of this will be painted uh, first in gloss white and then in matte black. The text is uh, then engraved using my fiber laser, which uh, burns away only the black paint, leaving the white text exposed. If I put all of the three layers one on top of each other, you see the idea. The LED strip runs just below where the text is. So you get a nice and even illumination and backlight of uh, all the text. So now let's uh, get to building. I've already done the sensor power panel. So for this example, we're going to be using the aircon panel, which has a similar design. I'll import this into the laser cutting program over here. I've already done it. And uh, over here, I'm just going to deselect the layers that I don't need to cut. I'll just leave the backplate on. And for this, I will be using a slow pass. It's going to be six millimeter per second speed and 37% of power, which is uh, plenty for the CO2 laser to cut through the acrylic panel. So now I'm going to just load the material and uh, then press start. So I'll go ahead and start the laser now. If you're curious to see how that looks like, I'm going to post my previous video here on screen. You can go ahead and watch that if you like. But basically once the backplate is done, I can just deselect that layer, turn on the light plate layers. This is going to be cut out of the 3mm transparent acrylic. What I do actually before cutting that, I mirror the bottom half, so when I join the two panels together, I can uh, send the seam line in between the two panels a little better because the laser actually cuts with a bit of a taper, so that makes uh, sanding it a little easier. And then once that's done, I'll just uh, finally cut the last layer, which is this one millimeter black 
back plate, which uh, I use to seal in the backlight to prevent any light bleed. So I'll go ahead and uh, cut out all of this and then I'll show you the final product. So here's the back plate uh, ready, freshly cut out of the laser. Uh, this has been already painted with uh, matte black, but uh, this is basically the idea. However, as I mentioned earlier, now I'm using aluminum back plates. These are much stronger, they are more rigid and they are realistic, just like the ones found in the real jet. I'm pleased to say that uh, this has been sponsored by PCBWay. It's an online uh, PCB prototype service, which uh, to my surprise doesn't only do PCBs, but uh, they also do uh, 3D printing, CNC work, injection molding and uh, sheet metal work, which uh, I've used to make uh, these amazing uh, aluminum back plates. To order them is very easy, just uh, go to their website, link is in the description, and click on CNC slash 3D printing, then uh, sheet metal fabrication, Upload your DXF file, choose the thickness and the type of material, and finally the type of finished. For my ones, I've used the 5052 aluminum, 1.5mm thickness, and the finish is uh, bed blasting plus uh, black and white. A few weeks later, I've got the package delivered, and the quality of the work, as you can see, is great. So, thank you, PCB Way, for sponsoring this video. I haven't got just uh, this plate, but I've also got the back plate for all my forward right and console. So stay tuned until the end of the video, where I'm going to show you all the panel finished. And here are all the pieces ready. So next I'll just glue together the two halves of the light plate. Just removing all the cutouts material first. Just to show you, these two goes together like so, and it leaves the LED channel exposed. And then finally, once the LED strip is installed, I'll just glue the bottom plate to seal everything in and avoid any light bleed. So I'll just go ahead and do it, and then I'll show you. All right, now it's time for the LED strip. So now that the two halves are nice and dry, we can remove all the clamps. And I will just put here the LED strip and uh, cut it to length. So this is the LED strip that I'm using. If anyone wonders, these are the details, but basically it's a 2.7 millimeter uh, cob LED strip which has already a sticky paper on the back and this diffuser rubber at the top to you know, hide a little bit the individual SMPs. I've seen this uh, method first on the Awareness S challenge and uh, it's great, I love it. It's much quicker and easier than using the individual LED and the backlight is super even with uh, no hotspots whatsoever. I just simply place the thin LED strip in the channel, in the channel that uh, I've cut, just like so. So I'll do all of this so I know where to cut it to length at the appropriate uh, spots. I've already done this, so I can uh, speed up a little bit the process for you. And that's it. We can make a quick test to see if the strip works. And it does. So, now that I know that uh, all of it works and there are no fail spots, I can go ahead and glue the bottom plate. And the glue that I'm using is the same glue that you saw just a moment ago is this uh, special glue for acrylic panels. It just melts the acrylic together and it creates a very strong bond. So uh, 
this is uh, pretty good stuff. So I'll go ahead and uh, clamp and glue all of this and I'll uh, come back and show you once it's done. I've gone ahead and sanded all the edges uh, smooth once the glue was dry and now the light plate is uh, ready for painting. Same for these two, I'm building them at the same time. The paint that I'm using, just some uh, good quality automotive paint. This is in uh, gloss white, so I'm gonna give them uh, three coats. Excuse the noise, but uh, I'm outside. First, a uh, very light coat, followed by two more heavier and wet coats. Okay, now that the white paint has uh, dried enough, I'm gonna go ahead and spray with the matte black. Same story, three coats, the first uh, very light and then uh, two heavier ones. So for the fiber laser I'm using the program that came with the laser itself. This is called uh, EasyCAD and uh, much like any other programs it allows to control the speed, the power and the frequency of the laser itself. So I've already imported the design into here and now I'm gonna just hatch the text to be engraved. This is my hatch settings. second area so I'm gonna do it in two halves because my work plate is not as big to fit the whole panel so now if I just select the first half of the text and I hit light I'm gonna have a preview of where the engraving will be and then I can just align the material and once I'm happy with the position I'll just hit uh, mark and the laser will start work Okay, so here are all the light plates uh, engraved and uh, as you can see the text came out uh, really really nice I'm super happy with uh, how it turned out it's really nice and sharp and it's just uh, I really really like the finish uh, that I that I, I got with this uh, with this engraving um, first of all if you use this type of laser you need to be careful as uh, eye protection is a must uh, they don't have any sort of shielding against the laser output, so be careful, always wear eye protection. Uh, just like this one, I have these uh, safety glasses and these are rated for the uh, wavelength of this type of laser. Uh, the reason why I'm using a, a fiber laser now is uh, because of a couple of advantages over the CO2 when it comes to engraving. First of all, it's a Galvo laser. As you saw, it moves really quickly and it has a very fine resolution compared to the gantry of my CO2 laser. And uh, second, thanks to its wavelength, I can just burn away the black paint, leaving the white exposed underneath as this uh, color reflects his uh, energy. Uh, the CO2 uh, works on a different wavelength that's uh, real good for cutting, but when it comes to fine engraving, I was actually burning through the acrylic and the text was uh, coming out quite deep. So it was still looking nice and, uh, and I liked it, but uh, I like this way much better. Um, already done a clear uh, coat over this to protect the finish. I'm using a flat clear with my uh, airbrush. And now basically the panels are ready for the final assembly. So. I've laid out all the components that I'm gonna install on the back plates and uh, I'll go ahead and do this and I'll show you the final result. And of course I'm gonna be using the aluminum back plates uh, from uh, PCBWay.
By the way, guys, this uh, switch card is also my design. This is a prototype that I've done with uh, just a acrylic uh, thin sheet. And I've already gone ahead and done the same, but with an aluminum uh, sheet of metal. This is just a one millimeter thick aluminum. And uh, I will be using this, but for the video, I've already painted this one in red, so I'll just be using this one. So here are all the panels assembled and they're ready with all the electronics installed and uh, I've already wired up a 12 volts uh, connector to the LED street cable so I'm just gonna go ahead and connect it to a power supply and show you how the backlight looks like. No hotspots, there's no light bleed from under the plate, nice and even. Awesome. I'm really, really happy on how this turned out. I'm really, really like this. So this is going to be the method that I will be using going forward, building all the rest of the panels that I will be using in my cockpit. Uh, of course, this is still missing the uh, knobs that goes on top of all the potentiometers here. Uh, I'll be 3D printing them using clear resin so then they can be backlit using this uh, ring of light, uh, much like I 3D I printed these uh, these ones over here. So, uh, like I mentioned in the older video, I'll be sharing the files to make these panels if you want to give it a go. I'll just have to work through the rest of the cockpit and then I'll be posting them for download. Uh, if you want to download the files for these knobs here, these are already uh, ready for download. They are on my Colts 3D page. I'll uh, post that uh, in the comments uh, below. Uh, of course, next uh, will be to wiring up all the switches and then coating the Arduino, but I'm not going to be showing this in this video because I don't want to make it too long and I think it's already long enough. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll make another major video in the future. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them uh, below. And uh, thank you for watching. See ya.